Hello, again from Mallorca in Spain, a really beautiful island if you have the chance to come. I want to tell you about a sort of a new topic, maybe uh, we can call it a new direction for uh, a branch of our teachings, um, for helping relationships, all right, for your, your personal relationships, marriages, whatever. I call it alternative thinking, okay? Alternative thinking. In a way, it's very similar to understanding words and to conflict and things like that. But maybe this will make it a little easier, a little simpler for you, right? Easier to integrate. Right? Alternative thinking basically is thinking about any event, specifically usually something someone said or did, that got you angry, or you disagree with, or just ruffled and such, and thinking of it in an alternative way. In other words, you are thinking about everything based on your opinions, your ideas of what it means, your, your determination of what's right, what's wrong, how something should be. Alternative thinking, the best examples are uh, language, but not even language, like just English, okay? For example, if a student in school, a young student in England, asks their uh, classmate or the teacher for a rubber, they'd be asking for an eraser or something to erase pencil writing. But in America or Canada, if you ask for a rubber, you're asking for a condom. Because a rubber is a condom over there. An eraser is an eraser. That's to erase pencil. But a rubber is a condom. Whereas in the UK, I don't know what they call a condom, but a rubber is an eraser. Or what about asking someone for a fag? You have a fag? In England, it means a cigarette. In America, it means a homosexual. In America, you say, can I have a puff? on your cigarette. So, puff. In England, a puff is a homosexual. So if you want to puff on a fag, <laughs> you know, you've got all these words, you can really get yourself into trouble. It's really funny. So, they're English. All English! And yet, words have totally different meanings, that if you don't understand that, you can get in a lot of trouble. Now, for example, when you go, you know, in English, you, say, you know, you know, you know, you're thinking, you know, in Chinese, in China, they say nigga, 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 nigga. Now, I don't know if you know the Harlem Globetrotters, but it's this American entertainment basketball team. They're giant, tall, black guys, all of them blacks, Negroes, and um, it's an entertainment. Now, they they were I, I was arranging tours in Australia and New Zealand and um, so one of the managers said that they were going into China but he was a white guy and he was helping manage them in China and he warned them before he said now when you hear people and you're gonna hear it a lot these Chinese people coming up to you and, or talking to each other and going nigger 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 says they're not insulting you <laughs> they're not calling you a nigger they're just saying, you know, you know. But you can get in a lot of trouble. So that's alternative thinking. Is instead of responding angrily, you think. Now, for example, your partner is uh, sick, has a stuffy nose, uh, allergies hit this morning, something like that. I suppose it would be politically incorrect to say she's getting her period, right? But I think boy or girl, you'll all know that it's a reality for some girls. And all of a sudden, she's snappy, or he's snappy, you know. <laughs> so you get a, why are you talking to me that way? What's wrong with you? Why are you being angry? And so you end up in a fight, right? But if you use alternative thinking, you stop and think, okay, what's this person going through right now? She's sick. Hmm. How do I feel when I'm sick? Mm, I snap a lot. Okay. So you stop and you think about what is the other person going through 
that they could be feeling which is making them behave the way they do. Are they from another country and although speak the same language, they have different meanings for certain words that sound the same to you? Like in Arabic, kefak. I say kefak. That means how are you in Arabic. So everyone's greeting each other, kefak, kefak. Oh, we're not swearing. We're just saying hi, how are you? So alternative thinking helps actually will eliminate a lot of your conflicts and fights and problems, okay? So if you would always be stopping to think that what is this other person thinking and feeling and change your way of thinking to the alternate, to their way of thinking, you might find that your relationships go a lot better and the beauty of it is it expands your mind. Now, what's great about alternative thinking is not only will it mean you don't have the same arguments or as many arguments, but, for example, if you open, if you're in a room, okay, let's say you have a one-room house, okay, and you have a window here and a window there on the different walls, you open this window, things can fly in. Open that window, they can fly right through. When you use alternative thinking as, and you know, as we said in another video, as the alteration of who you are, so it's not an exercise you apply whenever you're having a fight, but you are constantly, every minute of every day, everywhere, trying to think of alternative meanings or reasons or viewpoints. You open up a window, which is actually more like a concrete door right now in your mind, and it allows new concepts to come in. That's one window, you're opening one window. New concepts coming in, and eventually you become more creative. Now, if you really develop alternative thinking with humility and removing fixed opinions and the many other things we teach in the All Is Mind course, you open the other window. So, new concepts come in, new ideas, it goes into that room, which is sort of like your brain, right? In one ear, into the brain, and out the other one, or better yet, out your mouth, ideas, creativity, new inventions, solutions to problems, uh, brilliant vacations that you can have a lot of fun, whatever it may be. So it allows for creativity, for invention, for problem solving. It alters the way your mind works. So for people who don't really know me that well, uh, I'm not interested in giving you tools. Everyone wants tools. How am I going to deal with this problem, deal with that problem, that person at work, so on, oh, give me tools. I don't care about tools. What we're looking for is the alteration of who you are as a human being, which is going to alter the experiences you have in life. So alternate thinking is opening your mind to think like different kind of person but since we're applying this in general to everything, as I said, you do this constantly every minute of every day of your life, everywhere you are, you're not just thinking alternate like your partner. You're thinking alternate like everybody in the world. So it really expands your possibilities of creativity. Okay? So always think of that. Do you want a rubber? Someone asks you for a rubber. What do they want? What do they need? You find out who they are. How are they thinking? What could they mean? What is the context? If it's in a classroom, the odds are it's an eraser. If he's about to go on a hot date, I don't think he needs an eraser. So put everything in context. That's another way to open your mind. Don't limit the words to your opinion of what the words mean, because then you always end up in trouble. You have to take every word as a sound in a language you don't speak and apply it in the context of the situation and the person you are talking to to see what do they actually want or are they saying. And is their tone of voice appropriate because they're actually sick or have a terrible headache or something like that. And you do this for 10, 20 years or maybe 10, 20 weeks or something. I don't know. Everyone is different depending on how, mind, how your mind is open. 
you start to find differences in your creativity and problem solving and so on, right? Certainly in your relationships, certainly in yourself, less anger, less frustration, less pains, less sufferings. So we're going to keep discussing alternate thinking. We might even start making videos with specific examples in relationships and so on like that and see how it goes. So you can start asking questions about alternate thinking. You can start doing it, applying it, observing it, and then uh, ask questions about your specific events and experiences. So try that, and let's cultivate this concept of alternative thinking in relationships. So we can talk about uh, the problems you've had, the conflicts you've had, fights you've had, differences, and so on. And we'll start expanding this and see if we can help people have a better life. Because ultimately, I don't care what anyone says, I think ultimately we all want a companion. We all want love and sex and cuddles and hugs and, and someone to share our life with. So I think the people who say, no, I don't want that, they, they either are saying, it's too difficult, I don't think I'll get it. Or they're saying, I've had enough of it. It's too much of a pain in the ass. Either way, if you could comprehend the alternate thinking and make your ability to communicate much better, you would find that, you know what, really a relationship makes life a lot better, um, more livable, more enjoyable. So I think then we would get to a natural desire. Uh, and perhaps you'll outgrow that and you'll become a Buddha and you'll no longer need that. Maybe in time, but I don't think you know, we're quite there yet. So, all right, work with that, and let's see where it goes. Bye-bye.